music I listen to when I don't feel like listening to words. I listen to this or I listen to this. I like listening to listen to a lot of mariachi music, um, a lot of Tejano music. She told me when I was a kid, I don't know how old I was, but I was, I was pretty young, but I remember this and I always will. She told me that she, she was like, she was just kind of venting, you know. Um, she said that she used to sing and she had the opportunity to make a record or have a record deal or be a famous singer and that she chose her family instead because she had some kids or she was married and wanted to have more kids I'm not really sure exactly all the details but she told me she has regretted that decision ever since and if I ever get the opportunity fuck family <laughs> you take it that's how I took it when I was three years old or however old I was. Um, but I haven't done that. I've done actually exactly what she did. I put my kid first, my family first. It may not seem like it because I don't live in your traditional family and I do set boundaries with my family and I'm not around my family all the time, cousins, aunts, uncles, all that shit. But what I consider to be my closest family is my son and there were a lot of times in my life where I felt like I had to choose I had to choose either to be there for my son or be there for the music and at one point he was beginning to notice that and it was starting to affect him because he told me one time he was really young I don't know if he was like six or seven years old He's asked me, Mom, do you love music more than you love me? And that broke my heart. I was like, no. Why would you think that? No, of course not. But I realized that I guess I was showing him through my actions that I did love music more than him because I kept moving for music, you know, like moving from Seattle to California to San Francisco to LA to like just chasing this music dream and not providing any stability for him or I was willing to take a little shitty job because I was gonna have to go do a show or go on tour or something and I wanted that flexibility but because I wasn't putting my job first or my family first I was on like I was getting food stamps you know I was on state medical and I wasn't really making any plans for my future other than music and so when he brought that up I was like holy shit something needs to change what am I gonna do different and it was really really hard for me to be stable to stay in one place um, but I think that had a lot to do with my upbringing also my musical upbringing but 
the fact that my mother never stayed in one place. I remember going to a different school like every six months. Like every time our lease was up, we were moving. And we got our furniture from like rent -a center so it's like every six months they'd come pick up our shit and we'd have new furniture too. And when I say furniture, <laughs> I mean couch. We had new couches. We had couches and a TV. We never actually had a kitchen table. I didn't have a bed. I would just have a pillow and a blanket on the floor. Sometimes I'd have a mattress, sometimes. But a lot of the times, I'd just be sleeping in the living room on the couch or on the floor somewhere because someone would always be in my room, like my aunt, my uncle, somebody, somebody. My mom has like eight sisters and four brothers. So there was always people everywhere, but that was okay. That's how I grew up. Like sometimes I was at my aunt's house on the couch. I remember one time, okay, when we finally did have furniture, like actual beds, tables, couches, nightstands, all that shit, our house caught on fire, okay? So when my mom was finally like getting stable, the shit caught on fire and then we had to go find a place to live. And I asked my boyfriend at the time, his mother, if I could stay at their house and I just slept on the couch for a while. And that little bit, like that, that week turned into a month, turned into a couple months, it just didn't stop. And so I went to go stay with my mom who was staying at my aunt's house because not one person could take us all in. There was only three of us, but I guess they couldn't take us all in. My sister went to go stay with her boyfriend and my mom went to go stay at my aunt's house. And I remember visiting my aunt on the weekend or a week or something like that. And I realized, oh, there's no room here, but it didn't matter. Like there was probably two bedrooms or one bedroom and those are full of people. And then after a while I was like, mom, I want to stay here with you. And she's like, well, there's nowhere to sleep. I'm like, I don't care, I'll sleep on the floor. And so I did, like I would sometimes get the couch or I'd sleep on the floor or sometimes the couch and the floor would be taken and I'd sleep in the hallway. <laughs> Or I would sleep on the bed if no one was in there. Or it didn't, it didn't really matter. It was like, wherever you sleep, you sleep. And I remember one time I had this guy over because I had no shame, obviously. And he wanted to hang out and he wanted to stay the night. And I'm like, that's cool. But I mean, I don't know where we're going to sleep. So we both just sat on the couch and slept sitting straight up because there was no fucking room to sleep anywhere else that's okay that was totally cool with me I didn't know and I didn't care I really didn't care anyways I totally like my mind went pew, 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 pew. and that's how my mind works like one memory leads to another and to another and to another and then before you know it I'm like in this fucking rabbit hole of memories um, some of them when they um, come out of my mouth sound a lot more dark and traumatic than I remember them being. Um, which it, I think is my memory's way of protecting me <laughs> from my trauma. <laughs> but I also feel like I've always been like this really magical spiritual being that sees the good in everything and is always willing to have fun with it. Because the times when we were the poorest are like some of the happiest memories I have. Like, yes, I was home alone a lot with no adult supervision. I didn't have a lot of food and maybe only had like a mattress. I remember we had a mattress in the living room and sometimes we'd move that mattress to the bedroom, but we didn't have any furniture at all other than that one mattress. And my mom was like never home. I don't know where she was I, now that I'm thinking about it, but I didn't care, I didn't think about it at the time because I had the whole house to myself, you know? I felt like a little adult and I had my boyfriend there and I would have friends over still and we would just like eat potatoes that day because that's what we had. <laughs> or I'd go down the street or down to another apartment to my aunt's house and be like, hey, what are you making for dinner, you know? Um, at one point there was like four different family members living in the same apartment complex. So I would just go from one house to another to eat. Like I'd go eat breakfast in one place and lunch at another and dinner at another place. Like 
I, I was always like on the search for food, it feels like. But if they didn't have food, I'd go to my friend's house and I'd eat there. You know, like they're, I, obviously look at me now, I didn't starve. <laughs> I'm definitely not starving now, but I'm not going from place to place to eat or anything like that. But I, I took those as like adventures. I didn't see that as neglect when I was going through the neglect. And now that I'm a social worker and I'm looking back and I'm like working with kids and parents that are going through the same thing and I can look at it through the lens of that child and what that child is probably experiencing, I understand it. I can't say that every single child that experiences neglect is going to see it in a magical way that I did. <laughs> That's not true. Um, but a great imagination and a great mind and it's gotten me through a lot of stuff and I'm still happy and grateful. I don't know what the difference is. I don't know what makes people not so great and others so great. I, I definitely think it has to do with your soul, how old your spirit is and um, how many times you've been here to earth, how many challenges you've overcome. I'm not saying that everyone's going to overcome them magically maybe not the first lifetime you know <laughs> maybe you gotta come here like a hundred lifetimes to see things through my eyes I don't know or maybe there's something wrong with my eyes fuck who knows so back to the music <laughs> my musical taste has changed in so many ways because my life has changed in so many ways and because I've always been so open to experiencing so many things. And music has also been my greatest outlet, my greatest emotional outlet. No matter where I was, no matter how broke we were, I had my voice. I could sing. I didn't have to pay anyone to teach me to sing. I can make up my own sounds. I can create my own words, um, my own music, my own everything. And Music is available free everywhere. I would go from church to church, you know, playing pianos, learning guitar, um, every free resource that I could take advantage of, I would do. And music is still, to this day, something I love. And it doesn't matter what kind of music. Like, I don't really care. I really like complicated music. So the more instruments, the better, because I'm hearing all these sounds. I don't always like words though. I love to write words to music, but I don't always like to hear words when I'm listening to music because I don't want to be told how I should feel in the moment. I want to feel the way I feel, <laughs> you know? Um, and I know that that also, some people do that, right? You play music depending on how you want to feel or what you are feeling like if you're sad you listen to sad music or if you're happy you listen to happy music if you're angry you listen to angry music um I, I used to do that when I was younger but now that I'm older I just ask the universe to play me the sound that it wants me to hear and that has taken me all over the world you know just in my car or on the radio I haven't traveled the world in my physical body as much as I have in my mind and I feel like music takes me there in my mind. Music is healing. It has healed my mind. And hopefully I can heal people through my music. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, a lot of my music is really dark <laughs> and I do talk about a lot of depressing shit. A lot of depressing shit, a lot of angry shit, a lot of mental health. Um, but that's how I flush out my feelings and my emotions and what I experience is through the words, right? So I, I do the words to flush them out, but I don't like to hear words when I'm listening to music. I don't know if that makes any sense. 